Musba, you can proceed. Uh, good morning, friends. Today we have gathered here to listen to a very young uh, CA, CA Anuvesh Shetty. Uh, Anuvesh is a young CA and he was uh, earlier uh, vice chairman of Sikasa. Uh, I would uh, like uh, to uh, I would request our chairman, CA K S Kamat, to welcome everyone. Eminent resource person, CA Anuvesh Shetty. Uh, respected past chairman, dynamic committee members, immediate past chairman, CSS Nicer, vice chairman, C. Abdul Rahman Musba, secretary, C. A. Prasanna Shenai, senior members of our fraternity, friends, colleagues, aspiring CS, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. Today, technology has uh, so developed that we have to do best use of it. When computer is introduced 25 years before, we were using, in a CA, particular C office, using, we have substituted same to the typewriter. As all are aware of the, the computer, and uh, so now, today, Sorry, one. Today, we are using computer for all of our work. Starting from preparation of the any computation, documentation, even accounting too. And after the invention of uh, internet, its use is uh, multiplied thousand fold. Even our mobile has become mini computer too. Today, we are using system even for eating if you wonder what is that even we order groceries from our uh, through internet and even we you we order even ready-made food even through the swiggy and zomato and when it's so why it should not be uh, managing our uh, office so even members let me tell you the what three to four percent cannot do efficiently with the this uh, office management tool, we can easily manage our office work. We can build in various controls too. Those controls can be even controlling work, staff, even collection. We can add the features such as work, which is start from the work, work engagement letter, even collecting the leave notes from the uh, staff, even monitoring the work, prioritizing, uh, prioritizing the work, even collections too, and sending the reminders also. One more feature, what we can get from this office management tool is that cloud. We can store all the data in the cloud and we can retrieve it uh, from any place uh, and uh, work uh, in that uh, information. Members, today we have with us our own person, eminent speaker, C.A. Anvesh Shetty. Thanks to, thanks to our uh, senior uh, member who has groomed him. So, he has uh, grown, developed in our own soil. C.A. Anvesh Shetty, I met him first for the first time when he was uh, uh, Sikasa vice chairman. In, during that time also, one could uh, make out he is going to become a very dynamic person in the future. So, yes. Today, C.A. Anvesh Shetty is as grown to a one uh, uh, dynamic person. What we, you might have heard in Kannada, Beliva Mara Molake Alle Karbodu, yes. And... Uh, he has a lot of future in his profession. Uh, while wishing him, I would like to welcome him on behalf of our Mangalore branch. Uh, welcome you, Anvesh. Uh, and uh, Mangalore branch will be grateful to you, uh, grateful to him. Today, he will be addressing on 
see of its uh, management using technology. Members, you might be knowing that we are coming up with the additional webinar, that virtual seminar, on, which is starts from this 11th and uh, 11th to 12th, 12th, 13th, we have continuous three days and next weekend, Saturdays and uh, Sundays, again we have a, a virtual seminar on the share market. I, this is the program hosted by Secretary of SIRC, CA Panaraja and, and with the association of uh, six uh, branches. I request all you to enroll to this uh, seminar. You can update your knowledge in the share market and you can you can uh, you can have one more uh, resources uh, or avenue of earning and also you can glide, guide your uh, clients too. Members, uh, again I would like to remind you we will be having our uh, golden jubilee ceremony that is one night. Concluding that is on 18th and 19th of August. This is, uh, and you can, we have also arranged national level speakers and uh, giant personalities for this uh, conference. You make yourself free on that day to enjoy the historical moment. Before I conclude, I would like to welcome all the members and students. I hope you will understand what is this uh, tool, CA uh, office management tool using, using technology and uh, you will update your knowledge, you will adopt uh, to this uh, new technology or to MC, C. Abdul Rahman Musba. Thank you very much, sir. Now I'd, I would like to introduce our uh, speaker of the day, C. Anvesh Shetty. Uh, C. Anvay Shetty is a practicing chartered accountant based in Bangalore. He trains students on various subjects such as G uh, GST and enterprise information system. He qualified in 2017 and he did his articleship under C. A. Uh, Shiva Kumar K. He did his BCom from Alvas College, Mudbadri. He has trained over 30,000 students in both online and offline mode of teaching. Presently is pursuing LLB in Karnataka State Law University, PhD uh, on GST on real estate industry and ACCA. Recently, he recorded a certificate course on blockchain for finance professional, mainly dealing in various nuances of blockchain uh, covering cryptocurrency, NFT, decentralized financial application, and accounting of crypto assets. With this, I would like a moderator of today, Mr. Uh, C.A. Gautam uh, Naik, to take over. Yes, thank you. Sir. So, uh, as all of our uh, viewers know, uh, the speaker will start his session, and uh, whatever questions are there can be please posted in the chat box. I guess uh, Anvesh will be taking it up after his session uh, ends. So with this, uh, I request Anvesh Shetty to kindly commence the session. Over to you, Anvesh. Thank you, Gautam. First of all, I want to thank uh, Mangalore branch of SIRC of ICI for giving me this opportunity to address Mangalore crowd. And this is for the very first time I'm addressing Mangalore Chartered Accountants in a webinar or in a seminar. So this is a very special moment for me because this is the place where I learned my basics of uh, anything, anything that I know, this is the place that I learned and it is always a happy moment to give it back to uh, my own institute. So without any further ado, I want to begin with today's session. So I want to first set the ground realities first. What are we going to learn in this particular session, which will be spread across 90 minutes? So there are two things which I am hopeful to cover. That is, first thing is I'm going to talk about task management. And the second part is I'm going to cover something called as time management. So this entire session will not have any PPTs, but instead I'll be taking you through the practical approach of how you can set up both the task management environment as well as time management environment in your office. So, uh, so to begin with, I'll give the first practical demo as to how it looks. And at the end, I'll tell you how exactly you can do, like how, how you can configure right from the scratch. 
So I'll begin with sharing my screen. So the first software, what we are going to discuss is something called as Asana. Now, so I want somebody to confirm whether my screen is visible. Is it visible? Yes, yes. yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. yes. Perfect. So, Asana is a software what we are going to use to do task management in our office. Now, I have created a separate project so that I can uh, use it for a demonstration purpose. So, I have created a separate project, something called as Dummy Office. Now, I want to just click on it. Now, I'll go for a board view. Now, this is typically, this is typically how a CA office functions. Now, I've taken a freedom to assume that generally we function this way. Maybe there might be exceptions as well. So, normally what happens is whenever a client comes to you, he has an initial discussion with us. Now, let us say that I get a client. I get a client and who wants to do some partnership registration. So, what I want to do is, what I want to do is instead of writing in a piece of paper or instead of writing in a spreadsheet, what I would do is I'll open the software. And again, I'm saying I'll, I'll explain at the end how to get into this software and how to set all these things. But so whenever a client comes to you and discusses, so first thing what you're supposed to do is I hope that you can see a small plus mark here. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on this plus mark that is add task. The moment you click on add task, there will be a separate window. So you're supposed to write the task name. Now let us say it is a partnership firm registration. So I'm going to write firm registration. I'm going to use short form for the brevity of time. So firm registration, and I'm going to write the name of the client. Let us say X and Co. Okay, so this is the name of the client. So now I have created the task where I'm saying that this is the work which my office is supposed to do. But this is not just enough because I have just told what is the task name? Now, the second question comes is who has to do this task? Normally, client discusses with their chartered accountant, but the CEOs won't be doing this. They will be allocating the task to their staffs or articles. So that is where, so I have to click on this task again. Okay, I'll be clicking on this task again. Okay, I'll show it from the beginning. So I have created this task. So I'm going to click on this task again, and this window will open on the right side. So here I have to click on whom I want to assign the task to. So here is the assignee button. So I'll simply click on who I want to assign. So now there will be an automatic drop down. So it will show how many staffs I have in my office or how many articles that there are in the office. So I can select anybody and I can allocate this work. Now let us say I am going to allocate this task to one of my staff. So the moment I clicked, now the moment I clicked, what basically happens is I don't have to call my staff and say I have allocated the work, nor I have to send an email to my uh, staff and say they have allocated the word. Automatically, the moment I selected his name, he will get a notification in his mobile phone. Notification will be as similar to you getting your WhatsApp message. So the first thing is I'll create the task and then I'll go and say who is going to be the assignee of the task, that is whose responsibilities. Now, this is not it. So now I may also want to say this firm registration should be done by when. So maybe with the client interaction, I may find out that client wants this within next seven days. So I'll say the task has to be done by 16th of current month. So I'll say 16th of June, the task has to be done. Now the due date is also set. Now, priority is something that I can set. Maybe because sometimes we get the work. Now some work is of high priority, some work is of medium priority, some is of low priority. Now let us say that I have appeal to be filed in the next two days, that is a due date. That's the last day to file it. So I can say that this is a high priority work. My baby firm registration, I'll say this is a medium priority work so that my staff will understand that which work to prioritize and which work not to prioritize. Next is I can write about description. Now, most of the times what happens is clients sit in our cabin and they discuss what they want to do. Now, this may not be known by our staffs. So instead of tell, calling him inside the cabin and explaining what it is, it is always a better practice to write it down here so that it is documented. So even at later point of time, we don't forget it. Now I can write a description saying that uh, uh, what type of business it is. So business is into anything. Business is into uh, any explanation I can write. Also here I can write uh, you know, contact person details so that I don't have to write anything on a piece of paper. So everything is documented. So even if my staff tomorrow wants to call the client and ask certain other document, he can find their details within the app itself. Now their uh, contact person details and you can write some number. So as soon as you write it, it will be visible by the consent app itself. Now 
there might be one more question as to can i attach documents here for example now let us say that uh, uh, somebody wants to do a firm registration so at the same time let us say he has given his partnership deed to me or let us say he has given some other document to me now i want to attach it in this particular task itself so what i can do is if you can see there is a clip symbol here there is an attachment symbol on the top so what i'm going to do is click on that now now this is a very important thing that i want member to focus that whenever you want to attach a file you can do in multiple ways the first way is you can attach a file which is there in your computer that is the first thing you can do but let us say you have already moved it to a cloud environment where your all the data are stored either in dropbox or in google drive or in one drive you can directly attach the uh, directly attach the uh, the file right from the cloud environment but in this given case what i'm going to do is i'm going to attach the file which is there in my computer so what i'm going to do again let us say i want to upload one document which is given by the client so i'm going to click on this attachment and again i'm going to click on your computer and i have to select now let us say this is the file which client gave me this is all the dummy files that i've created so i'm going to create let us say one two three file i want to upload so i'm going to click on open now what happens is now what happens is the files gets uploaded now this is always a better practice normally what happens is uh, in our office in every pc there is one one copy of the file rather than having offline files it is always a better practice to upload the file to asana now there might be a question as to is there any storage limitation or is there any limitation as to how many files that i can upload the answer is there is no limits as to how many files you can upload it as long as as long as individual file size is less than 100 mb now 100 mb is in fact enough size for most of the files that are there in a c office except couple of tally files which may be bulky in nature for all the pdfs all the documents normally it won't be above 100 mb so you can upload unlimited files having said that so let us say that you don't want your files to be in asana in this particular software so what you can safely do is instead of uploading the file directly to asana you can click on dropbox or you can click on google drive where you can attach your file which is there in your office server so so whenever i do this now let us quickly go back and see what i exactly did so whenever a client came i created this particular task that is firm registration of xn company i have allotted to one of my employee and then i also selected what is the due date of the task at the same time i also have set the priority whether it is high medium or low at the same time i also have given a description of the task not just that i have uh, what i have done is i have also uploaded certain attachments so now my employee can see all these details even without having to exchange single word with me not just that now let us go to another feature another function now let us say that in one particular task in one particular task there could be certain sub task now for example the client who comes to us he may have a sub task saying that let us say uh, one is he wants a gst registration as well now another task could be something called as itr filing so he wants to file his itr so there might be some other sub task as well now this is just for the sake of example so now so what is the main task the firm registration is the main task at the same time sub registration uh, sub task could be gst registration another sub task could be itr filing now i have created this sub task now the question is can i assign this sub task to somebody else because main task i allocated to somebody else now let us say this gst registration being a clerical work in nature i want to assign it to one of the article so can i do that answer is yes so how do i do that so first is i created a sub task here then what i'm supposed to do is i'm supposed to click on this arrow if you can see there is i do not know whether you can actually see it owing to the uh, screen size so again let me go back to that task here now if you actually can see gst registration i'm going to click on this small arrow here so the moment i click another window is open okay that is of that sub task so what i can again do here gst registration i'm going to assign it to a different employee now let us say i'm going to uh, give it to an employee of mine or an article of mine and again i can say i can set a different uh, time limit let us say i want it to be ready by next uh, 3 days that is 12th of june i want it to be ready and again i can add a different description now for the gst registration alone let us say client has given some other uh, documents let us say they have given their uh, uh bank account details have given their trade license i can again inside the sub task i can attach it okay so let us say this is the attachment what they have given and i am going to upload it now the moment 
Now, the moment I have selected another staff's name, what basically happens is they will get the notification. Okay, in this case, the concerned staff will get a notification in their mobile phone itself. They'll also get an email saying that this particular task has been allocated to you, and this is the due date that they can see and description that they can see, and this is the file. Now, now let us say, now let us say that this is just the beginning. This this basically happens on day one. Now, what happens next? Okay, so the task is here, which I've allocated to one of my staff. Now, normally, what is the practice that I follow in my office? I'm not saying it is the best practice. I'm just going to say that it is a practice that I am following in my office. And for the members, I leave it to their wisdom as to what they want to do in their office. But so normally, whenever I create a task, it is always under a bar, something called as to do. That is, the work has not commenced yet. Only the details has been obtained from the client and nobody has started working on it. Now, let us say, the concerned employee, the moment he starts working, what he has, what he is supposed to do is, he is supposed to click on this, okay? He is supposed to click on this and he is supposed to pull it to in progress tab, okay? I'll do it again so that uh, members can see it. Normally, sometimes what happens is because of I'm sharing my screen, you may not see that slow moving, but it is as simple as click, drag and pull, okay? So I'm just supposed to click it and just pull it. Now, what basically is happening is, let us say the concerned employee, what he did is from to do, he is pulling the task to in progress bar. That is to say, he has started working on the same. Okay. Now, let us say that for some reason, for some reason, the, uh, the partnership registration is not, uh, not in progress. Now, let us say some document the client has to give us, but he has not yet given us. So rather than the task is being in progress, what employee has to do is he has to put the task under the hold tab, okay? So again, I'm going to say again, whenever you task, the, whenever you start the work, it will be under to-do, to-do list. Now, once the employee starts the work, he is going to pull that work into in-progress tab. Now, once, as long as the work is going, he has to do nothing else. But let us say the work is halted because of some reason. Let us say client is not answering the call, client is not giving the documents. At that time, he has to pull the task and put it under the hold tab. That means the work is stalled, the work is not happening for some reason. Now, every time, every day I come to my office, this is the first thing which I see, that what tasks are under the hold bar. Now, this could be because client is not responding, this could be because the employees do not know how to do it or they may want more training on this. So this is the first thing that I see in the office and I clear up all the things under hold tab. Now let us say, in most of our offices, we have this process of maker checker process. That is one person does the task and another person reviews the task. Now, if you have that practice in your office, now let us say somebody has uh, drafted a letter to the department. Now, before we finalize it, it has to be reviewed by somebody else. Now, the question is, how do you know that it has to be reviewed? Owing, uh, let us say that there are so many documents to be reviewed. So, the best practice always is to create a, another segment in this software, something called as review tab. Okay. Now, let us say this particular work of firm registration X and company is complete in all aspects. Now, before delivering it to the client, before handing over the, before handing the deliverables to the client, my staff wants somebody else to review it. Now, let us say in most of the offices, it is the chartered accountant themselves who review the work, or in some offices, they have a separate manager who will review the work. So the person who has done the work, he has to push the task under the review tab. Okay. So this means the task has to be reviewed. The task has to be reviewed by the person who is in charge of reviewing in your office. Now, after review, now after review, there are two possibilities. Now, what are these two possibilities? Either you are satisfied with the work or you feel that there might be certain changes that they have to do. So in review, what you can actually do is whenever you are reviewing it, let us say this has come to your review and let us say you're not happy with the work which has been done. So what you can simply do is you can write to the concerned person who has done. Let us say that whoever has worked on this, I can say that uh, you know, partnership deed, uh, deed format is not correct. So any comment that you can write, deed format is not correct, please rectify. So once I do this, and what I can again do is, once I do this and I click on comment, this means he will get a message. Now, it was in review. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push it back to in progress tab. That is to say that the person has to start working on it again. 
Once he is done, so again, what he's going to do, he's going to make the changes and he's going to upload whatever the revised document is under the in progress tab and he is going to push under the review tab. Now, again, when I'm reviewing it, let us say I am happy with the work. Okay, let us say I am happy with the work. So what I'm going to do is I am going to push this particular task to this tab. I call it as the done tab. That is work is completed. Okay, now, is that it? So normally, whenever we do a task, most of the times what happens is we don't bill our clients. That is because we don't have a track record of what work we have done to our clients. So even if you do 100 work, maybe... Uh, 60 to 70 percentage may get built, major, but the majority of the portion may go underbuilt or unbuilt. So once the task in, is in the done sector, that is in the done segment, there are only two possibilities. Either the task has to be built or it is a free task. So I call free task as pro bono. Uh, the members are free to call that task as anything that they want to. So once the task is under done, you as a, uh, the, the head of your office or if there is a manager, uh, who will be who is actually taking care of all the operations in the office so they have to decide whether this task has to be built or unbuilt okay or not to be built so if they feel the task has to be built all that they're supposed to do is push this task to another tab something called as build tab now the person who is in charge of billing in your office has to immediately raise the invoice on this the moment you push the task to bill the person who is concerned of billing has to raise the invoice and send it to the client Okay, so at the same time, you may want to communicate with your uh, staff saying that you want to bill. So I can say that the person who is concerned with raising an invoice, now let us say that uh, I have a different employee who is concerned with raising an invoice. So I can say, please raise an invoice, please raise an invoice. So I can say, what is the invoice amount here only? But if I want to keep it confidential, I can simply stop it here, please raise an invoice. Or I can say, for rupees, whatever, for rupees, let us say 10,000 rupees, and I can come in. So what basically happens is the concerned person will get a notification and then they will say, uh, raise an invoice and then they will mail it. Ensure that in your office there is a practice in which the concerned employee also simultaneously updates here saying that the bill has been raised and mailed to the client. Next is what happens. So once we raise an invoice, what is the next step? That is we need to receive the payment. Now most of the times it may happen that Invoice is raised, but payment is not received. So can we track it here itself? Answer is yes. So once, once the amount is received, if members can see on a top, there is something called as mark complete. So the moment the person who is in charge of accounting of your office, who confirms that the money has been received, the moment entire amount is received, what they're supposed to do is click on something called as mark complete. The moment you mark a task as complete, that means this particular task of firm registration of X and company is complete in all aspects. So right from the beginning, we decide, uh, we discussed as to uh, what happens when a client comes, how do you allocate it, uh, allot it to your staff, how do you set the time, uh, by when it has to be completed, how do you set the priority, how do you upload the files, how do you review it, how do you comment on it, and how do you raise an invoice, and how it is sent to the client, and how do you confirm the receipt of payment. So this is the first segment of our discussion where we discussed in brief, I'm not saying we discussed in detail, in brief we discussed what are the different segments or what are the different uh, processes that we can have in our office. So quickly I'm going to take you through again. The first segment is to do, that is the first step when the client comes to you. Once the employee comes start working on it, it will be under in progress. Once the task is held for any reason whatsoever, it will be put under hold tab. And then if it is for review, then the concerned employee will put under review tab. And once you review it and you're happy with it, you're going to push it under done. And after it is done, you decide whether it has to be put to build task or pro bono. If it is built, the concerned employee has to raise an invoice. If it is pro bono, no invoice will be raised. But again, the track will be kept that these are the work that we have done for that particular client. Now, I hope that members have understood till now. Now let me talk about what are the other things that we can do. So sometimes what happens is, more uh, out of my practical experience, so uh, suddenly our clients call us, ask inquiring about what is the status of their work. Now, when we have so many different work, so many different files, it is humanly impossible to remember that what, what exactly happened to that one particular file. So Asana can help you to understand at what stage we are in uh, as far as that particular file is concerned. Now, we were talking about this file that is X and company. Now, let us say X and company gives you a call. So 
here at the top there is something called as a search button if you can see so immediately the as long as the client is on call i can directly do x and company so the moment i type x and i can see here a task so the i can click on it and i can get to know what exactly has happened to that particular file by reading the comment box so you need to have a practice in your office that every day before the employee leaves whatever the task that they are working on they are supposed to update about that task in the comment box so that at any given point of time a client calls you asking about what is the progress about their work all that you are supposed to do is you are supposed to come to the search box and type the client name and as, uh, as soon as you type the client name the software is so good that it immediately brings out uh, or it comes back with the particular client's name and you can uh discuss further with your client on that so that is one of the feature now talking about another feature now this is one of my favorite feature something called as filter now what is this filter now let us say that i have a small team i have a small team of 10 people in my office now i want to know what exactly one staff is working on so all that i can do is i can click on this filter button i believe everybody can see it i understand that the screen uh, the character is very small but here there is a button something called as filter so the moment i click on filter it will ask what do i want to filter do i want to see what are my tasks or do i want to see what are the tasks which are due due this week or due next week this is also one of the interesting feature i'm going to discuss next but here there is something called as custom filter so i can click on custom filter and i can click on any employee's name now let us say that i'm going to click one staff's name and i want to see what is the particular task he is doing so i can see that one staff called as rishab he is has two work as of now going which are there in in progress and he has done one work which is under review so with this i can decide whether to give an extra work to rishab or whether he has or whether he already has too many things on his plate so i was just talking about the filter aspect here now there are other features as well for example there is one extra feature something called as calendar so when i click on calendar i get to know i get to know that what my entire office has to do that tomorrow what work what is the due date of another work day after tomorrow what is the due date of another work probably <clears throat> so the entire months or probably entire years calendar as far as task is concerned will be visible in one single dashboard so this is also one of the very nice feature of what asana can do to us so these are the things what asana can do now uh, initially gautam has asked that to take the questions at the end but what i want to do is so this is the brief discussion of what asana is so as far as tasks are concerned if there is any question i am willing to take up now because next step i'll be discussing about something called as time management software so if you have any questions you are free to ask now Anvish, no questions have come in the chat box as okay. of now. Perfect. So we'll, we'll wait for two minutes, I guess, right? Yes. So now moving forward, next thing is the next thing is what... uh, one one second, one second. There's one question. How yes. do we install this software? Uh, now that is that is what I was going to talk about. This. Okay. Okay. Now, plenty of questions are coming in, Anvish. Uh, we'll give the. give them some time and then i guess we will move forward okay yes. so shall i take them one after the other no what we will do is what we will do is let them keep on posting their question because i feel okay. i i have to explain what how asana to set up the asana so that uh, half the question will be reduced so i will be taking people to the next software that is clockify first okay this is a time management software now i was talking about whenever a client comes whenever a client comes what i basically do is i create the task so i'm going to create a fresh task again so i'll say this is for some company in corporation now let us say this is some company in corporation of let us say q and co okay q limited let us say it is a company in corporation of q limited so the task has been created now i am also assigning the task now let us say i am assigning the task to myself that i only want to do the entire incorporation so i have selected my name and due date i have given to myself as three more days 
to incorporate the company and priority I have given as high and some other description. Now, this thing we have already discussed. What I want to talk about here is I want to talk about the, the timing aspect because whenever I want to build a client, most of the times what happens is we sit in our cabin and we do not know how much of time is spent on one particular work. So whenever a client comes for fees negotiation, sometimes or most of the times we are unaware we are unaware of the fact that what time was exactly spent on that particular work. So that is where the time management also becomes very important. So if you can see here, there is something called a start timer. Okay. Again, I'm pointing in my mouse here. There is something called as start timer. But before I click on that, I want to say that this is a different software altogether. Now, this is not Asana. So this software is something called as Clockify. Okay, so what it is, I'll again talk about it slightly later, but whenever, now let us say at this particular point of time, I am working on this particular company incorporation of Q Limited. So before starting the work, I'll come to this particular page of Asana and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on start timer. The moment I start clicking on start timer, what happens is the timer starts running. Okay, so the software is automatically calculating what time I have put into this particular software. Now, where is it? Because I cannot see the time here. That is where I told you that the timer is not an Asana software. The Clockify, the software which will track your time is a separate software altogether. To see that, you have to come to another window. So this is that another window of Clockify. So this is how it will look like. So now I can see that the one task is running and it is 38 seconds, around 40 seconds, which has been spent on that particular task. Now, let us say that uh, I'm working on this particular task and I'm stopping it. So one minute I worked on that task, not normally one minute, it will be let's say 30, 40 minutes I worked on that task and I want to go to another task. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to press on the stop button. So the moment I press on the stop button, the time gets recorded. So if you can see here, this is a company incorporation and then of Q Limited. And it has also recorded at what time I started to work, at what time I stopped working. And I can also record as to what is the time exactly which is spent on that particular work. Not just this, I can also set whether this is a billable task or non-billable task right here. So if, if chartered accountants have some assignments which are built on the time basis, then they can set whether the task is built or not to be built here. So here you can see rupee written in blue. That means it is billable, but let us say it is a non-billable task. So I'm going to click on it again. So it becomes gray in color. That means I am indicating that this task is non-billable task. So as of now, I would want it to remain as billable one itself. Now, the importance of this, the members will be able to appreciate better when at one single window, they'll be able to see what their stops are exactly doing. Now in the work from home environment, what basically happens is we are in our house and employees are there in their house. As far as it was the office, the chartered accountants could literally see their staffs or their articles, whether they're working or not. Now, when it is a work from home environment, it may become a little bit challenging to know whether our employees are really working on a particular task or not. If they're not working, then CAs may consider giving them certain other assignments. But rather than individually calling them or messaging them and asking what you're doing, now this is the best practice. So what I normally do is, let us say that I come to office every day and I want to check who is working on what particular task as of now. So there is one, uh, icon that you can see here, something called as dashboard. So I'm going to click on the dashboard here. Now here it is going to show, okay, so this is a dummy that I've set up for uh, only for today's purpose. But in this uh, dashboard, I can see that one staff is working on one thing, another staff is also working. So here there is in progress, in progress, in progress. But when I talk about other staff, let us say one, two, three staff, there is no timer which is running. That is to say that these three stops are not working on anything as of now. So what I can simply do is I can go back to Asana. I can give assign a new task to them and I can inform them to start working immediately on those things. So this is how, this is how you can work on two softwares that is Asana and Blockify. Now, not just this. Now, let us say that uh, in your office, you have a policy of reviewing the work at least once in 15 days or once in 30 days. So what you can do is you can go to reports here. Okay, so this dashboard basically shows who is working on what particular task at the moment. 
but let us say you want to do a monthly review or a biweekly review so all that you are supposed to do is go to reports here and you can click on let us say a detailed report that you want now what do you mean by a detailed report let us say you want to uh, take the report staff wise so you want to understand in one month how many hours your staff has worked okay now in that how much is billable task how much is not billable task so what you can do is here you can filter it you can say in your team let us say i can choose any staff's name and i can select and i can apply the filter to understand how many hours that they have worked so this being a dummy project you wouldn't be able to see any data here but in real practice if all your staffs are logging their time all your articles are logging their time then whenever you come here and you click on detailed report and you select the particular staff name you will be able to see uh, you can also set that you want to see their work for one week or 15 days or 30 days or for the entire year so even this you can do with the help of another software something called as clockify now having said this so these are the things that you can do with the help of clockify software now comes a question this software is different and clockify software is different so how do i link these both the softwares because if you have observed it if you observed it what basically happened is i just came and i clicked on start timer now automatically whenever i clicked on start timer and i clicked on done automatically the timing is running in the another software not just that not just that this software the secondary software is also pulling the the task name that is company incorporation q limited i did not type this so that is to say that these two softwares are interrelated so we call it as integration okay so we will also talk in today's session as to how to integrate these both the softwares okay so now i am going to talk about how to set this software right from the scratch so i am going to log out from here because i want to create a new account so here also i want to stop it and i want to log out from here as well so both the softwares i have logged out now so if members want to set this up in their office what they are supposed to do is you come to google the first thing what you are supposed to do is type asana asana now no, normally people ask me is asana a bangalore based software or a indian based software answer is it is not an indian based software it is probably us based software so this is the page that is asana so whenever you click on asana so this is the page that you should be able to see now the first thing what i want members to do is come to the important factor of pricing here so first let us understand whether this is a free software or whether it is a premium software now i'd say it is a freemium software where certain features are given free of cost and certain features one has to pay for but for chartered accountants i firmly believe that we do not want any feature which are there under premium so almost all the features that we want are covered under free version of it okay so now what i'm going to do is so this is the pricing so this is a basic version then there is premium business and enterprise version now let us only talk about basic because i am using the basic version so here you are you don't have to pay any amount of money no credit card required nothing is required and you can also see it is going to be free forever it is not going to be 30 days free after that you need to pay something now you can create unlimited amount of task you can create unlimited projects there is unlimited messages that you can do that is you can write unlimited comments and unlimited activity log or unlimited file storage i told you that individual file restriction is there that is 100 mb per file but let us say you have thousands of excel sheets of 50 mb each you can upload it without any problem but the next point is very important which i want member to focus is what is the restriction here or what is the catch in the free version the free version can be used only for 15 teammates that is if your office is smaller medium size where you have a staffs of 15 or less than 15 then you can use the free version now what if you you have staffs more than 15 maybe you can think of creating two asana accounts maybe you have two different uh, uh, let us say working in your office maybe there is entire team who will be working on gst there is an entire team who will be working for income tax maybe you can create two different asana accounts or maybe that you know if you feel that you don't want to create two but you want to have it under one itself then you may also think of going for premium version but having said that basic version covers almost everything that a chartered accountant needs then there are other features as well i'm not going to discuss on those because that is not very relevant as of now so now what i'm going to do is 
under the pricing tab, I want to start something with the basics. So I'll click on get started. Okay, so this is the first step how to set the installation. So the moment I get it started, they're going to ask for my uh, email ID. So what I'm going to do is I've created a separate email ID for this, something called as mangalore.test1 at the rate gmail.com. So this is the email which I've set. Now, I also request members that if you are going to try this asana in your office, I humbly urge you to create another uh, email account. Do not give your professional email ID. The reason is very simple, that every time a task is created, somebody puts a task for review, the app is going to send you so many emails. So you'll be bombarded with the email. So it is not ideal or not suggested or not recommended to have it in your professional email or else you'll be receiving hundreds of email on a daily basis. So you and your staffs or articles, it is recommended to have a separate email ID only for the purpose of time management and task management. So what you're supposed to do is put up your email ID and click on the sign up button. Now you will be asked with a question as to do you want to try premium for 30 days or do you want to continue with the basic? Remember to continue with basic. We don't want premium features as of now. So continue with basic and it is signing me up. I'll wait for some time for it to sign me up. Okay. Now please verify your email address. Get started with Asana Basic. Continue with Google to verify. Okay. So I'll click on continue with Google. Here I will log into the same account. I will type mangalore.test1 and I'm going to put my password once again. Okay. So my account is getting set. Okay. So they will ask, what is your full name? So I'm going to give my full name. And I'm going to click on continue. And this is the second question which comes is, tell us about yourself, Armish. What kind of work that you do? So here there's a drop down, And when I click on this, they ask whether it is marketing, product design. So as a CEO of face, it is operations. So I'm going to click on operations. And I'm going to click on continue. Now then they will ask some questions. You can directly skip it and say, I'm not sure yet. And what's something you and your teammates are working on? So you can say, this is a CEO office work. So I'm going to click on CEO office. This is the project that I'm creating. So this is the project name and I'll click on continue. So what are the few tasks? So instead of writing here, I can click on continue safely. And now this is the important question as to how do you want to segment your work or how do you want to divide your work into stages? So initially when I showed the demo, I told in my office, I have seven segments. So I'm going to do the same thing here. When the client comes, it is under to do. And when people start working, it is in progress. And once the work is on hold, it is hold. Now, Four I want to add, but I can't add it here. So I'll just click on continue. I'll add it later. I'll show how to add it. Now they will say, how do you want to look at your work? Do you want to see one by one or do you want it to be in board or you want to be in timeline or calendar? I prefer board because it is elegant and minimalist. So I'll click on the board view and I will say continue. Now, this is the next step that is teammates email. So it is the admin. It is you who is setting up this account. You are supposed to invite your teammates. Okay, so here you're supposed to write the new email IDs which are created by your staffs. Remember, do not give the old email IDs because that will be spammed or there will be hundreds of emails from Asana. Again, you can stop it, but I would not recommend it. So create a new email ID and type your employee's name. So let us say I have an employee whose email ID is something that's abcd at the rate gmail.com and that's it. So I can say, take me to my project and an invitation email will be sent to your staff and they have to accept it and they can join the project. So I'll say, take me to my project. So this is the screen. Okay, so there are a couple of tasks already created. You can go and straight away delete the task. No problem with this. Okay, so this is the window that you can see. The first is to do, then it is in progress, then it is hold. Now I want to add a couple of other segments as well. So I'm going to write here, click on add section and I'm going to write review. And next is I'm going to say another section. I'm going to say it is uh, completed or done, whatever you want to call it as. Next, I'm going to say, let's say bill, billing. 
and maybe another segment, I'm going to call it as pro bono, that is free work. Now, this is how you get started with this software, where you have uh, gone to Asana, you have given your email ID, you have confirmed your email ID, and you have invited your teammates, and you have created different segments. Now, going back to the very beginning, whenever a client comes to you, all that you're supposed to do is click on plus mark, write the task name, allocate it to your staffs, and then you can set the priority and set the due date, and you can start functioning on this. So this is as far as Asana is concerned. Now, this is the time where I'll be taking all the questions on Asana. So if members have already put their question in the chat box, I'll be taking it. If not, then members can also unmute yourself or you can type the message in the chat box and ask. Yes, Anvish, there are plenty of questions. Uh, you want me to read them to you or will you take it up directly from the chat box? I, I'll take, I'll take directly from the chat box. Okay, 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 Anvish. Okay. So the first question is, how do we install this software? I believe that I have answered that question as far as how to install this software. Again, you have to go to Asana website and uh, there is no, no software to be downloaded. Everything is on cloud. Now the question is extent of access to levels of participants. This is a very interesting question as to do we have a role-based access control here? So, uh, so here in the free version, that is one of the drawback. So that is everybody has access to everything, just like we have in our office. Uh, everybody has access to server. Everybody has access to all the work files. So once a person is a part of your team, he can see everybody else work, everybody else progress. So uh, as far as access is there in the free version, you don't have an access control per se. So any person that you have invited, they have access to entire your entire project. But uh, let us say if you are working on certain confidential files, then you can always switch to premium version. Premium version has a lot of access controls. That is, you can set controls as uh, who um, read only files, who has permission to create tasks, who has permission to delete tasks, modify tasks. So all these things can be set in the premium version, but not in the free version. Now, next question is, can I link the task to a client? Answer is yes, sir. So I told you in the basic version, now let us say there are 15 participants. Now, 15 participants, you could have 10 as your staffs or articles and five as your clients. Now, whenever you send it to your client, they will not have access to all rest of the task. I repeat, whenever you are uh, sending the request to the client or you are adding somebody else, I will show you quickly, how do you even add them? Now, for example, let us say, somebody has come for company registration. So I'm going to say company registration of, let us say, ABC company or ABC limited. So what I'm going to do is, so here I'm allocating the task to somebody else. So let us say I'm giving it to one of my employee and then a due date, all these things. But at the same time, I want to add my client to the task so that I want my client to be able to view what is happening. So I don't want them to call me again and again. So what I can do is at the bottom, you can see something called as collaborators here. So all that you have to do is write here, you can click on collaborators and you can write the type the email ID of the collaborator. So I can say that again, I can add somebody else as collaborator. So I'll write their email IDs and I can add them as a collaborator. So when you add somebody as a collaborator, when you invite them, they'll be able to see this task, share only this task. Okay, you're supposed to click on share only this task. So they'll be able to see only this task and no other task in your project. Okay, I hope that question is very clear. I'll be taking another question. Okay, now stages of task can be customized. Answer is absolutely yes. You can customize it. So this is what I have in uh, seven stages. You can have eight stages, 10 stages, 50 stages. That will give the, the members to decide on that. But yes, it can be customized. So where are the files getting stored? Is that secured? Now, to answer this question, so I'm going to again take back you to the Asana uh, page itself. So here, because it is very important for us to know that whether our files are safe or not. Asana pricing. Okay. Now, at the bottom, you can see who are the other people who actually use Asana. Now, okay. 
So now if you can see, it is Dan One is using, Deloitte is using, NASA is using, United Ways are using, some top companies are using this. And also, whether the security of your file, whether it is different for the free version and whether it is uh, different for the premium version, uh, when you actually go, go into the resources which are there in Asana, they say the security is not compromised. That is the same level of security what they offer to Deloitte is the same security that they are going to offer to you. So uh, there is not going to be any compromise whether it is a free version or whether it is a premium version. So the files are secured. But at the same time, if you do not trust this asana, there is no requirement you, for you to trust this asana. So you can always keep your file in the Google Drive or you can keep in the OneDrive and you can just share the link here as an attachment. Next one is, can, can allocate one task to multiple resources? Now, you can either create one task and allocate it to one, or you can create multiple subtasks and create it to uh, multiple people. That can be done. But can you allocate one task to multiple people? Answer again is yes, but that is by way of adding collaborators. I'm going to show it again here. Now, let us say, now this task which I have created, now this task which I've created, I want I have allocated to only one. So here I can't allocate it to multiple people. But at the same time, I want two, three different people to work on that. Then I can always come to collaborators and I can click and add them as collaborators. So that can be done. So next question I'm going to take, how about secrecy of work? Uh, allotment to different staffs. So as I've told already that if in the free version, that uh, all the staffs will know all the work which is given to other staffs as well. But in the premium version, you can uh, uh, you can maintain privacy and secrecy within your own office. If every work is allocated known to all staffs, answer is yes, sir. Everybody will get to know it. Now, if one CA has office in two different locations far away, how does it work? Huh. In that situation, what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to create two different projects. For example, so in the given task, so I'm going to go, I'm going to press on the home here. If you can see on the left side, I have home. I'm going to click on home. And here, if you can see, this is one office. Okay, that is C office. Now let us say I have another office. I can click on new project and I can click on blank project and I can name it as C office to, or you can write, which is that office. Let's say you have another office in Bangalore. You can say C office Bangalore and privacy, it has to be public to operations. And so anybody who is a part of operation can see it and next, We'll say I want default to be in board and I can create the project. Now, this is a different project altogether. So your Bangalore office people can see Bangalore based work. So they are supposed to come and click on Bangalore and see the work there. And your Bangalore based people can come here and see Bangalore based work here. Next one is most of our work are on Excel, Word documents, Winman software, whether all these softwares are attached to Asana software so that staff work can be estimated. Yes, so if I understand the, the question properly, that is when our work is in Excel or Word document or Winman software, how, how do we work along with Asana? Now Asana is a task management software. That is every time an employee does some work, what he does is at the end of the day, he is supposed to upload his whatever he has done in the Asana itself. So what I do in my office is, let us say I have given one work to draft one uh, reply to the department. And the, um, the staff has started drafting the reply. So in that day, whatever he has done, after it is done in the word format, he's going to upload it to Asana with proper naming. So if renaming is not proper, then Asana will not be of any help. So whenever you upload it, you will rename it as whatever the client name, task name, version one. Tomorrow he uploads, it is version two, version three. So you will always have the version control of that particular work. So same is the case with Winman as well. So uh, Asana can be used as your office server where you can have the backup of the data. But to function, you have to download again to your system and you have to start working on the same thing. It is not that you can do Excel in Asana. You have to download from Asana to your own system, work on it. At the end, the work is done. You have to again upload it to your Asana software by changing the version number. Again, uh, there are multiple questions as to security. I believe I've answered uh, the questions about security. So I would not yes. be data. Kindly excuse. Can all participants modify entries made by admin or job setter? Can any participant delete the task without the knowledge of admin? Now here, Asana has a specific feature of keeping the logs. So for example, here I have created the task. Now, when you come to the bottom of this task, you actually can see 
that Anvesh has created this task. He has created this he office and he has assigned to this particular staff. So anybody where to modify a task, it cannot be done without bringing it to the knowledge of the admin. So because every movement that you do, whether intentionally or by mistake, it will always be logged in Asana. And even if a task is deleted, it will be there in the trash and it can be retrieved. Having said that, can somebody delete the file permanently? In the free version, that is one more drawback saying that a person can delete the web. But you can always have a backup. So this is similar even in our office. So we have a server where all the files are there. Most of the times, in most of the offices, if, if one person decides to go Gaga and delete all the files, he can do that. But we always have a backup. Similarly, in Asana also, you can take backup or you can use some other software to take a daily backup. That is also possible. So even if someone have, someone decides to play some mistake or by mistake, some all the data gets deleted, you can always retrieve by taking a backup of the same. All you can do, all you have to do is uh, here on the project, there is your office. I'm going to click on uh, the arrow down here. So here it is export and I can export in JSON. So that means the backup of it is created. So and whenever I want to retrieve it, I can always import it back and Asana will be as it was. One more question. Ha. Huh. When we upload a document in the software, will only the person assigned to the task will be able to see? Answer is, he is the only person who will get the notification saying that this particular task has been uploaded. That is because he is the one who is uh, assigned with that task. But the question is, if some other stuff, if he wants, can he come and check it? Answer is yes. Because initially also I've told you, in the free version, you cannot have privacy to each staff, privacy to each task. Once you say they are in your team, the entire team will be able to see what is happening in the team. Anvesh, I would like to interrupt in this. Uh, I guess there is another application called as Britrix. Uh, in its free version, I believe, uh, if let's say a task is assigned to an employee, only that employee will be able to see it and no others in the team. Am I right? You can yes, uh, yes, yes. throw some light on this. Yes, yes, yes. There are. So there are multiple softwares. For example, there are softwares like Jira. There are softwares like Trello. Now, these softwares come with certain advantages, certain disadvantages. So I have picked one generic software like Asana, and I leave it to the wisdom of members to choose. They want to do their risk return trade-off as to what exactly that they want, and they can choose accordingly. But this, I want it to be a starting point as to what they can do, what are the different possibilities that they can achieve in their office once they switch to task management software. Now, Next one is, does collaborators have similar access controls? Uh, if you're inviting people, then they don't have an access control. They can view only that one particular task. And your, your collaborators cannot invite somebody else. It can only be invited by the admin himself. So except that, uh, your staffs can create the task, your staffs can modify the task. Okay, so when the person assigned the task shows it has under progress for a long time, how can you monitor? Can someone else de-escalate it or task on? So uh, when a particular task is under, okay, now this is where a, a bi-weekly or monthly meeting will come to rescue. So I've discussed in the Clockify feature, what one is expected to do is you call up your, you call one monthly meeting to discuss each staff's or article's progress. There, they have to clock their time. So you have to set... Let us say in a week, they have to work. Let us say five hours a day. That means six working days, 30 hours a week, or let's say 100 hours a month. So that is a minimum target what you're setting. So you are setting that every staff has to give at least 100 billing hours. So now at the end of the month, you go to Clockify, you generate the detailed report. And if you don't see 100 billing hours, then you can call up for that particular staff and you can have a discussion as to why you know one particular task took longer time. So these things can happen only when you actually call for the meeting. Softwares cannot tell uh, as to what exactly is happening. Softwares can help us to identify which staff is spending a lot of time on one particular work. Now, is there a report in Clockify to get a monthly time sheet of all my staff? Answer is yes, sir. There is a report. There is a report. I'll, uh, in fact, I showed it at the beginning, but again, uh, I'll... After this, I'll go for the Clockify, where again, I'm going to show you how you can actually get staff-wise report or, uh, you know, client-wise report. That is also there. So I believe I have taken all the questions. Uh, no, there's one more. Uh, yes. 
is there any attendance software which can get integrated with Clockify? Try and get together attendance and timesheet. So now the question is uh, whether there is an attendance software. Answer is no. Uh, there is no separate attendance software which can work with both your Clockify and Asana. So normally, I'd, I'd request member to keep attendance as a different one. Let us say you have biometric in your office. Let that not be linked to your Clockify or Asana. Let that be only to record what is the login time, what is the logout time. So once your employee logs in, then whatever he does in the office or whatever he does at home or even in the offsite uh, audit, that can be tracked by Clockify. Now, if you really want, you actually can check the attendance with the help of Clockify itself because at any given point of time, you start the work, the, the work start is getting logged in Clockify. You can see 9.30 the work started, 10.30 the work ended. That means 9.30 he has come to the office. But I'd again say if you are very keen on attendance, not to uh, use Clockify for the attendance purpose, to have a separate register, attendance register in your office or have a biometric device in your office. Now. Okay, will, I guess that's all. Yes. Now, if there are some other questions, we will take at the end. Sure. So what we are going to do now is, so we have understood uh, what are the things that we can do with our Asana, particularly in the free version of it. Then let us go and check another software called as Clockify. So you have to go to Google and type Clockify. Now, you will see this, that uh, the first link, Clockify.me. So this is also a free software. So again, you're supposed to say start. So this is the first time setting up the software. I'm going to say start tracking time. It's free. I'm going to click on that. Now, they're going to ask if I'm going to say this is the first time. I'm going to say I'm going to sign up and I'm going to have to enter my email ID or I have to choose my password or I can continue with Gmail to Google as well. So I'm going to say, I'm going to continue with Google and I'm going to say that I'm going to use the same email ID that is mangro.test1 at gmail.com. Okay, so this is as simple as that. I have also set Clockify. So I'll wait for the, the processing to happen. Okay, so this is going to be our screen, but if you observe that this is the new account that I've created and I have not invited anybody. So the first thing is I have to go and invite people to my team. So again, so Asana also have invited all my employees. Here also in Clockify, I have to invite all my employees. So I'm going to click on team button here and I'm going to uh, type the email ID. So I'm going to click on add new member and I'm going to type their email address. And I'm going to, let us say, I'm going to add call one more person. So abc at gmail.com, one of my staff send an invite email and I'm going to say I'm not a robot and I'm going to add. So what happens is my staff will get an invite and he has to accept the invite and he'll be part of my Clockify team so I can manage his time. Okay, so now what has happened is, what has happened is I have set one software Asana completely. I have also set another task, uh, another software called as Clockify. Now the next process is to integrate the software. I need to merge my Asana along with the Clockify, because these two are different software. So I need to give the interconnection between that. So how do I do this is very simple. So what I'm going to do first here is, okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to open a new tab. Members, please pay attention here. It will get slightly technical here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to come here and I'm going to say, Clockify. Chrome extension. So this is what I'm going to type, Clockify Chrome extension, and I'll press enter. Because I want an extension, a separate tool to integrate these two softwares. So what I'm going to do is, so here you see there is a, a chrome.google.com. So this is the Chrome store where I actually have the extension. So you will get a screen, something like this, Clockify time tracker. and I'm going to click on add to Chrome and I'm going to say add extension. Okay, so I have done it. So extension is being added. Okay, so now next thing, what I'm supposed to do is, so here most of the members get confused is, I want you to focus here. So there is that one small black uh, icon here. And when you hover your mouse on that, it says extension. I'm going to zoom it for the benefit of members. Okay, so here it is, uh, okay, that doesn't get zoomed. Okay, anyways, so the black button, I'm going to click on it. 
and it is going to show me the different extensions. So if you can see here, there is Clockify Time Tracker. So what I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to click on that one pin mark there. So I'll click on pin here. So that means that means I have successfully integrated, I have successfully integrated my Clockify along with Asana. Now, not just that, all that I'm supposed to do is now whenever I come back to Asana, now let us say that this is C office and I'm going to click on this. Now, if you actually look at, uh, look at this, you will not see any start timer button here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart my, uh, or refresh my page. And okay, I'll just close my screen and I'll restart my screen because you have to close the window and open the window again for that uh, function to work. So just one second. Nope. Share my screen again. So this is my screen. Now, so if you can see here, there is one extra button that is of Clockify, which has come. So I'm going to click on that and it will say login. And I'm going to log in. Okay, so now it has logged in. So again, you're supposed to click on this and click on login. It will automatically log in. And then uh, normally it should come. I don't understand why it is not coming. Okay. So you can click on start the work here, but let me not do that. Okay, one second, just give me a second. So you need to restart probably a couple of times. So only then the Google Chrome will realize that there is a new software. So again, I restarted my browser. I did not do anything extra. I just restarted my browser. And now you can see this start timer here. So again, I'm going to explain what I did. First thing is I went to Clockify, created a Clockify account with the same email ID. Then I went to Chrome and I typed what I wanted. I wanted a Chrome extension. So I typed Chrome extension Clockify. So once I got this, once I got this, what I did is I added this to my Google or my Google Chrome. Then I pressed on this. Then I pressed on this and pressed the blue button here. Once I pressed this, uh, another icon came. So here I logged in using the same email ID. Once I did that, I restarted my browser and then the start timer did appear. Now it may look a little bit complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write type this thing, entire thing, and I'm going to share it in the group so that members can do a step-by-step -step process of how to integrate. Only the integration part may become, may look a little bit of technical, but apart from that, this is very simple. So once I have this, once I have my Clockify extension. So what are the things that I can do? I also, I already told you can generate a, a detailed report. You can generate summary report. You can understand dashboard that who is working on what particular task. Now, so that brings us to the end of what I want to tell today. That is about two different softwares and how do we use it? How do we use it to track our time? If there are any other questions, I'm willing to take. Yes, Anvish, there is one question. Can billing software be attached to this asana? 
Now, uh, normally billing software cannot be attached to Asana. Now, uh, if you're asking, okay, now, for all the question, what I'm what I can do with Asana and what I cannot do with Asana. So I strongly recommend members to go type Asana integrations. Now, so once you get to this page, where what are the different apps that you can use? So there are hundreds of apps. So whether invoicing can be done within Asana itself, answer is yes. But is it ideal for a CEO office? I'd say no. Because our invoices has to comply with a lot of our own laws, GST, CGST, place of supply, all this coming into picture. So I'd say keep the invoice separate. But can it be integrated? Answer is absolutely yes. So uh, if I were to talk about what are the multiple other features that Asana can offer, which definitely I do not want to cover in this particular session because I don't want to confuse members, but you can integrate your Gmail with Asana. That is to say, you can open your Gmail account, whatever the email your client has sent, you can directly assign it as a task to your employee. So you can directly pick there and you can say this particular employee has to follow up this email and the task will get created. So there are so many other integrations that can happen. If you can see, there are hundreds of software. It is not just Clockify. There are some other time management softwares like Clockwise is there. You can integrate Google Calendar into this. You can use... Uh, uh, Zapier. So Zapier is one more software. Now Zapier, the, the very question that they asked, can I link a billing software to this? So a Zapier will act as a middleman, as a tool which will automate anything. So if you want to even uh, add your Zoho to, uh, Zoho, let us say you raise your invoice with the help of Zoho books or QuickBooks, can you attach it to us? And the answer is yes, with the help of this one tiny tool, something called a Zapier. But is it advisable for a chartered accountant to have that? Answer is absolutely no. Keep complete control of your billing raise invoices right from your winman software or other softwares and keep it simple okay uh, there's one more question uh, which software and version do you recommend for a typical ca office of mangalore roughly uh, what is the purchase and maintenance cost per year you think can we invest for this so when I started, so this was not my first task management or a time management software, to be very honest. I started, again, I am I am not anywhere affiliated to Asana or any other software. So I started with softwares like Papilio. I started with softwares like MyTask. And though those softwares offered certain good features, but as far as accessibility is concerned, as far as ease, ease of usage is concerned, those softwares lack something. And I tried a couple of other softwares like Jira and Trello, but again, those were not very easy for our staff and articles to understand. So at the end of the day, if our staff do not understand it, at the end of the day, our articles do not understand it, then there is no purpose of having a software in the very first place. So when I talk about Asana, what basically happens is uh, you can use Asana in your iPad. There is an application in App Store. If you're an iPhone user, there is again a separate app for that in the App Store. Android, you can use it in your within your mobile phone itself. You don't have to use a desktop to create the task. You don't have to have a desktop to have a complete control of your office. You can use it with the help of your Google Chrome or any other browser. So I'd strongly recommend if you were to start doing this, start, do not invest your money in anything, start using Asana. And once you really understand what you really want out of this software, then we can look for certain alternatives or certain premium version of it. But as of now, I'd say you start with the basic version of Asana without spending a penny. You start with the basic version of Spotify without spending a penny. Experiment it for a couple of months. Then you will have so many possibilities. Then you can think of investing, investing your money into some software. There is okay. a, all, yes, all the features in browser is same as Android phone. Answer is yes, sir. And the, the sync is unbelievable. Like there is no lag within fraction of seconds. All the devices get synced. It is a flawless software. So Anvesh, since integration with Asana is possible with a lot of applications, I guess if we research into it, we will get more and more application out of Asana itself. Absolutely. So uh, Asana is recommended for uh, most of the offices in Mangalore is what I feel personally after listening to you. Yes, yes, definitely. So I've been trying this, I've been using this software personally for two years and okay. uh, there has not been a day that I, well, any day I regretted for using this software. So it is smooth and uh, it is good. It is a okay. feature. Okay. So that's all I think. Uh, we don't have any more questions. So uh, I request uh, the MC to please come in.
Okay, we have our uh, chairman here. Maybe our chairman wants to give a closing note on the presentation. Uh, Anvesh, uh, it was uh, I was uh, uh, referring the uh, this uh, tool uh, what you have presented today that you are today referred Asana. I think you are using continuously for your office work also. And uh, uh, actually, just till last year, I I heard that the office management tool uh, is available, but still I thought. Uh, as you have told, some office uh, management tool has its own advantage or its own limitation. Then I should, I thought that uh, I should also have one more uh, office uh, management tool. I built my own one uh, tool last year. I uh, gave uh, this one uh, my one uh, uh, wife's sister's son is also into software. So when I made one team and I one formed one uh, one I also inbuilt uh, one. Uh, uh, tool like this. Uh, in that also, I've incorporated all the controls as you are told. To start with, in my op in my this one the tool also, we can even uh, uh, work engage. We can start from work engagement letter. Initially, we can uh, give work engagement letter also. After that, uh, again a uh, checklist of the work is also there, which can give to the our uh, staff uh, while assigning the work. Uh, as you have told, priority, prioritizing the work, all those things are there. We can, we can even client-wise also, even work-wise also. So even some client we can give important. And in that case, uh, priority will be there to that work also. Always uh, that uh, the number of hours, that control, all those things. Even we can, uh, as uh, I, I have told you, so in my uh, this one application, I have even added even uh, leave note also. So any of the staff suppose uh, is going on leave, so they can they can give send uh, leave notes uh, email, uh, and uh, all the at the end while uh, paying salary also all their months whatever the work they have done work list also we are getting to see that yes they have given their performance so that is also there in that one and after that uh, reminders also suppose any client. Uh, has not paid any fees also at the end after billing that reminder also that also uh, uh, that is also incorporated in that one so anyway so what i am telling is in the morning also i told so today all the ca office so with the we can we might be having one or two managers also in my, in our office to see that whether our office is uh, all the work we are uh, uh, is going according to the system, there will not there may not be any delay in the work, uh, or after the work uh, whether we have made a bill to all the work. Uh, so all those things we want to understand. For this we may require uh, two according to the number of staff or work. Uh, so we may require two or three staffs. But this uh, else uh, with the single operator of that uh, office management uh, uh, tool. So this is a, uh, what I have to tell you. This is a, a right time that we have to adopt ourselves to this available technology. And also, I think that not only this, even uh, uh, I was uh, talking to our uh, branch secretary, Prasanna Shenai also. So we have to understand in future cloud-based accounting. So that is also very important because in the future it may not be so say uh, the uh, the time goes like this uh, suppose the COVID so we uh, COVID uh, I don't know first wave second wave what is the future wave I do not know if we gain trouble it may not be easy for us uh, to or send our staff to outstation or outside to the client place and uh, even check the details so in that case the cloud based accounting will play very important role all uh, in the cloud based accounting again uh, if the vouchers are incorporated along with the entries even we can able to see those uh, vouchers also so this may also help us in uh, by auditing not by uh, by work from home also so that is what is uh, uh, thinking so that also we should understand for so that our uh, it will be helpful to our uh, cs for their practice uh, and uh, now uh, if no other uh, doubts or uh, clarifications are required and then we can uh, go to uh, out of thanks uh, prasanna is also a very expert person in this regard <laughs> always uh, he has also used to help me while forming that uh, or uh, that tool or uh, what uh, software 
so present uh, before uh, going for vote of thanks so whether you like to uh, inform anything to the, for the benefit of members we, we have uh, anvesh shetty uh, and i don't think uh, i will take the charm away today so he, he has been a uh, wonderful uh, explaining uh, the uh, importance of asana and how uh, the same software can be customized for the office ca office management and uh, i second that uh, opinion of anvesh because uh, we have also been uh, using uh, asana after the anvesh recommended last year and uh, almost we are using it for uh, almost more than one year now and uh, every student and uh, staff of our office is finding it easy uh, to coordinate and uh, manage the task based on uh, this software uh, yes there are many plenty of softwares and as anu said uh, it's uh, left to the decision of the members uh, to select those softwares and uh, i believe that uh, similar to anu i had experience with the various other softwares like uh, my task pelio or any other software where we uh, were uh, getting stuck in one or the other uh, matter or uh, right there, there, there were since, uh, several bugs uh, in the uh, my task software also so gradually the software have to be uh, get adapted uh, for the office environment and uh, 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 till now i think asana was the best software which uh, uh, came up to my mind other than uh, i can say software of chairman so i'm not uh, <laughs> i am not promoting that software uh, that's my opinion on uh, this asana and that marketing but then it will be free of cost <laughs> okay uh, can, I, can i move to uh, yeah yeah. Of what, yeah okay 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 so yes, thank you uh, yeah thank you gautam and chairman uh, uh, sir so in today's session uh, we have uh, uh, heard uh, anvesh dwelling upon uh, in practically uh, the details of uh, uh, the softwares uh, like asana and uh, uh, the clockify uh, which has been uh, very relevant and uh, uh, practically has uh, uh, shown uh, it to all the members so i'd like to watch for the effectiveness of the software uh, that would be very good for uh, office management at, at least in mangalore uh, considering uh, the various uh, utilities and various add ons available for the software and uh, easy uh, easy use of the software will uh, be a uh, great use for the uh, office staff and articles so apart from masana i think the committee for members in practice have tied up with the various other uh, uh, software companies where they provide paid softwares but at a discounted price um, it may be uh, pepilio it may be simply practice it might be grc product suit etc so there are multiple softwares where uh, uh, committee for members in practice uh, of ica have tied up so we can try that also but depends on uh, uh, your uh, background check of the software because ultimately once you, uh, you use the software uh, the, the main uh, thing depends on the uh, the after sale use or uh, after sale service we can see so how uh, technically you are uh, uh, sound to manage the software so based on that you can uh, select the software uh, so on behalf of the uh, mangalore branch of sirc of ica i would like to thank uh, c anvish for uh, joining us today and uh, making a beautiful presentation a very knowledgeable presentation on this uh, softwares and office management specifically it will be very helpful for the members of the mangalore uh, in the upcoming days or and uh, I, i hope uh, that uh, we will be more geared up to handle the upcoming audit season also uh, thank you anvish and uh, finally this uh, vcm is successful only because of the uh, efforts put forth by our own members So I would like to thank uh, C. A. Abdul Rahman Musba for uh, being MC of the session, and I would like to thank uh, C. A. Gautam Naik uh, for moderating the session and uh, mostly handling the uh, question and answer session. So I would also I would also like to thank uh, uh, Devan Logix uh, for the technical uh, support provided by them uh, for this uh, Zoom platform. Uh, last but not the least, I would like to thank all the members, uh, students, and uh, other participants who have joined us today for this uh, uh, virtual CP meeting and making this uh, successful. Thank you. Everyone.